Hello and welcome to Bowtie Life. This is Bowtie Dave. About to share with you some new planting that we're going to be doing. This is uh, this represents a new crop that uh, we're adding to the property. And uh, follow along on Facebook and YouTube. You'll you might actually see other information about this. But wanted to do a really quick video on planting these up. Look at the roots on these. Oh my goodness, it's just amazing. I just can't get over how much life is in these seemingly dead pieces of sugarcane. So this is, uh, get my hand out of the way here. Just look how much these roots are growing out. We're gonna set up some soil and uh, put up the camera on a tripod and just record uh, what we're doing here. Gonna put uh, some garden bed soil, mix it with a little bit of compost, a little bit of the Dr. Earth um, fertilizer because it's going to be good for the uh, root development and the green development. Might even add a little bone meal. That's uh, for roots. So we want to see these things take off. Now these two in the middle here, this 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 one is just starting to get some roots. In fact, if I can pick that, you can see, look at that right there in the middle. That, uh, those little white nodules, you can barely see on the right side over there. Just barely starting to grow out some roots. Just barely. It was very cool. It's exciting. So let's go. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So here we go. It's a windy day out here and uh, Hurricane uh, Nicole is coming up on the east coast of Florida. We, of course, are in the panhandle of Florida. It's beautiful weather today, except for the wind. We're over here on the side garden um, to hopefully protect us from the wind, but the wind is coming mostly from that direction at the moment. So we'll just have to see what we can get. Hopefully the sound will come out all right. Uh, I did notice something. I was just showing, I'm gonna come around here to the camera. I was just showing you these roots and on this, oh, here, let me zoom the camera in just a little bit so we can get a good focus. But so these roots are looking really strong. And then if you look right here, I don't know what, if that's another root or if that's actually the first shoot starting up, that little white thing right there. I'm going to keep it. I want, I, I want to keep an eye on that. Uh, so I'm actually going to try to plant this so that this little nodule, which is where the green stuff's gonna grow from, this little nodule will just barely be above the soil. I'll be, I wanna be able just to see a little bit of the top of it in that little white thing right there, just to try to follow along, because hey, I'm learning here too. We can learn together. This is sugar cane. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see what we got here. It's got a few supplies. Uh, of course, I I just put these in another bowl just to make sure they stay in water. Sometimes these videos take me a long time to create if I'm not careful. But uh, I, as I was coming out, I discovered I had two um, grow bags uh, that had tomatoes in them, not from last year, but the year before. They actually sprouted in about, I want to say, no, I'm, no, yeah, from last year. Uh, they probably sprouted in September of last year, 2021, and they grew over the winter. One of them died, one of them thrived and made fruit. I uh, actually had transplanted it into the garden, but uh, um, anyway, they've been in the garden. Uh, if you follow along and you uh, have seen my raised garden bed tours, this one was in the uh, back of garden bed number two, right next to the Kajari melon vines. So the one on the right here, but it's good soil. Uh, we're gonna supplement it anyway. 
we're going to water it. In fact, uh, we just want to kind of clean it up first. And this one actually has very little in it, just a couple of random leaves, nothing really growing. This one has, I don't know, oh yeah, there it is. This one has something growing in it. And I want to get the whole root. So I'm digging down a little deeper, digging down a little deeper. And you can see here, I'm pretty sure I got the whole plant. You can, you can see that root uh, comes all the way down to here. And that's the plant. That's the only thing that was really growing in that one bag. Um, but uh, you want to kind of clean these things out for, of weeds specifically. I'm actually going to pull out some of these leaves as well. Uh, I am going to be putting back some other uh, mulched leaves. Oh, ha, there's a peanut. That's from the apartment over a year ago. Maybe 12, 13, 14 months ago. We had a squirrel that would come and bury peanuts in our uh, in our uh, grow bags at the apartment just before we left and uh, I keep finding peanuts in my soil. It's hilarious. Uh, now this bag has some uh, perlite in it. Not much, a little bit. It's a little stiff. I'm going to dig down and loosen it up. It really looks like good soil. Oh, oh, wow, that one's moist. We're going to have to keep an eye on this one. Make sure nothing extra comes growing out of it. Uh, but it really looks like fantastic soil. It's moist. Wouldn't be surprised if I found a worm in here somewhere. Just looking casually here, but uh, I don't see any. It has a lot of compost in it. Uh, and I'm going to add some of the Dr. Earth. Uh, I've talked about this before. There's no sponsorship. And I'm not saying this is the stuff you have to use either. This is the stuff I use simply because it's what I have access to. Um, it is a uh, 463. Remember shoots, roots, and fruits. Uh, the six is higher. And uh, that means we're going to be focusing on root development for these plants, which is what we want. We want good root development. Uh, it does have some for the shoots, which is the green, the four is shoots, roots, and green. Again, folks, this is a broken rule of thumb, rule of broken thumb. Uh, it kind of is loosely, the pros will say, no, no, no. Well, there's a little bit of merit to it. It's not exact, but kind of a rule of thumb. So what you need to do is as you're feeding your plants, figure out what stage the plant is in. And right now, these plants need roots and some shoots. Uh, I'm hoping they'll start growing some shoots real soon. Maybe this one already is. We'll have to watch that. I'm, I'm a little excited about that. But uh, anyway, so I'm focusing on shoots and roots. That's how I pick the fertilizer I use. Later, uh, like a tomato plant, after a tomato plant has been planted, it's got a good root system, it's starting to show up, throw up green. Well, then you look for a fertilizer with a higher last number, the third number that's going to be more your fruits and actually both of the last two numbers do fruits i like to focus more on the k the npk the k at the end is potassium uh, that really seems to get my fruits going but uh anyway that's that's how i pick these now let me show you on the bone meal notice it's actually two seventeen zero two and seventeen this is big time for root development and so it doesn't take much of this for a bag this size. And uh, that really, really helps to focus energy on that root development. So uh, I know this actually has some bone meal in it, uh, but I'm gonna add just a smidge more. Uh, maybe, a, uh, I don't think I even did a tablespoon there, uh, but this stuff here, I put a couple tablespoons in. And we're just gonna yeah, there's a couple tablespoons. I'm gonna put a couple in the other one as well. And I'm gonna put some bone meal in the other bag. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna split these three up amongst these two bags. So that's just a little, and none of this is sponsored. I, I personally, I do like the, uh, the Stay Green. I like the Dr. Earth. Espoma has good products. Uh, Captain Jack's, there's a lot of great products out there. 
The one thing I do look for is that they're organic. And uh, I've mentioned in a previous video that uh, um, the reason I like organic, if you get into chemical fertilizers, you can very easily burn a plant to the ground. And uh, you really have to follow the directions very precisely. Uh, they do pretty good from what I understand, but I don't use them because I'm, I'm not that precise. And uh, I'm, I'm a little bit ADHD. And so I kind of just, th you saw how I just threw things in there. Um, number of gardeners I follow do that. But uh, we're gonna just uh, thank God for our gifts and move on and figure out how to use those gifts. Uh, I happen to think one of my gifts is my ADD. It's done a lot of good for me through the year. So I'm just, this, this soil is actually pretty loose in this bag. Uh, I am gonna wet it down a little more before we plant. But uh, let, me, let me do the other bag here real quick. I do have a hose behind me here. Uh, it is not connected to the well. It is connected to city water. Uh, I, I mentioned that I would like to get the well water when I can. Um, and in fact, this actually has well water in it right now, the bowl of water that I showed earlier. Um, so anyway, there's a, it's not bad. It's, it's got some moisture in here. Um, it's, it was kind of dry on the top. I don't know, maybe quarter inch or so. Uh, I'm really kind of hoping to see some worms, which is why I'm not using a tool because I don't want to injure a worm. I'm not seeing any worms in here. I'm not surprised about this bag. I was hoping to see some worms in the other bag, but I didn't. But these grow bags, these are Gardzen grow bags, no sponsorship or anything. Just what I found, I get a bundle of uh, 20 of these 10 gallon grow bags for like for, for around $40. Uh, it's $2 a grow bag. And if you've bought pots and other things, uh, you know how expensive they can get. And so I, I have found this to be a really good deal uh, for my environment. They don't uh, go dry. Um, another thing about the grow bags, as roots come out to the grow bag, well, first off, as root, if it's in a pot, a solid pot, those roots come out and it'll start wrapping around looking for more nutrients. Well, that's called, that will become root bound. Um, the grow bags, it's a little different because the roots will grow to the edge of the bag. As soon as it detects all that oxygen, it stops growing that root and starts another root back here. So you end up with a lot more healthy roots, not these long stringy roots that we're so used to seeing when we get root bound uh, plants. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a whole lot better. One of these days I'm gonna, I actually thought I had some pictures of when I did the experiment a couple of years ago where I had a tomato plant in a bucket and a, the same tomato plant in a grow bag. Um, the bucket had uh, I think I stretched out maybe eight, six, eight feet of roots, just some long scraggly roots. And then the, the grow bag was this, looked like a chia pet, just this pom-pom of roots. Uh, and I went back and looked for those pictures and I don't think I took the pictures. Uh, so uh, that was before I was really doing very good on keeping records. But uh, anyway, we might have to do that this next growing season. I am going to, water these down now one thing when you're overhead watering one thing to keep in mind is that overhead watering doesn't get a good deep watering normally i mean you have to stand here for a very very long time to get this good and deep watered so really all i'm doing is i'm getting the surface maybe the top inch or two not much in fact we'll check it here when we're done on this dry one. Now this wheelbarrow actually has a hole in it. It's supposed to drain out. Uh, not on purpose hole, just it's old. I've had it a few years. But just keep in mind when you're overhead watering that it takes a lot longer. It's one of the reasons why drip systems are so much better. Because you can turn on a drip system for an hour. It uses just a little bit of water and it actually would do a much deeper job of watering. And what that does is it will create deeper roots, which is healthy for anything. Uh, you want those deeper roots. 
So let's see what we got here. You saw how long I watered this. It wasn't very long, so I'm going to dig in here. Quarter inch, half inch, three quarter, down. Okay, so I'm down about an inch and I'm down to fairly dry soil. So that, wa that amount of watering got about an inch in this soil. Now it will vary on the quality of the soil, the content of the soil, um, but that gives you an idea. I mean, I, I sprayed it for, what, a minute maybe? Not even a minute, and it got the top inch. And it, it'll go deeper and deeper the long it, longer it goes. And if you just find standing there in overhead watering satisfying, go for it. It's, you know, I, I know some people actually find that as their zen time in the garden. And so there is nothing wrong with that. Uh, I don't generally have that much time, and so I have an irrigation system that does all that for me. Um, watering is one of those things I would like to do more of, but I don't because I'm, okay, I might be lazy. Anyway, there I said it. I do have a, a pile of compost. I want to get a shovel full in uh, these uh, bags just to have some better uh, nutrients in there. This is compost from our um, equestrian center. Uh, you'll probably see some videos here about this time on uh, how hot it was. It was very hot when I got it. Uh, so like 140 degrees. I think we've got it cooled down now uh, and starting to be more nutritious. It's got a lot of nutrients in it. Hang on. So it is very light and fluffy. Now the thing about uh, the sugar cane, it actually wants a sandy soil, which there is a bit of sand, especially this one. There's a lot of sand in this grow bag. The other one, not so much. So I'm kind of, I'm gonna put two in this bag uh, because I have more hope for this one. I wanna see what it does in the other bag. Uh, but this stuff here is light, it's fluffy. There's a lot of uh, composted stuff in here. Um, it is probably a few months old but you can see there's a lot of material in here that hadn't been converted at all. So there's a lot of everything in there that you would find in a horse stable. Uh, but just mixing that in with the top bit, uh, just to kind of get it incorporated. It might mulch a little bit. If, it, uh, if it's not mulching enough, I might uh, do some, I, I did a video recently on uh, making mulch out of leaves. And so I might do that. I'm, see, I'm leaving a little bit here on the top uh, empty just for that purpose. So I have a little room to put the mulch. So anyway, I'm not pump, I'm not pushing this down hard. I'm just gently getting it flattened off on the top. So I'm gonna put these two small ones. This is the one that has the little thing growing. And you basically just do a little trench for this thing to sit. And I want these roots down inside there. So, all right, I'm just kind of packing it in gently as to not break any roots. Those roots are very tender. Uh, and I have left just barely above the one uh, little nodule that had the green thing growing on it. So, um, kind of anxious to see what happens to be honest. I'm a little excited about this. So we've got one there. I'm gonna put this other small one, which actually has a nice nodule on it. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it there. But basically, because of all the root growth on it, I feel very confident it's going to take off. Now these can grow into very big plants. So once we plant them out somewhere, and I have a feeling they're gonna probably go uh, by the bee box along the white fence. For no other reason than that's where I have the space. But I'm gonna give those both. There's a nodule showing there, and this nodule is just barely showing right there. But they are in the soil. This area, uh, if you follow along, you know this area gets watered really go good, and I've discovered it is a fantastic location for uh, growing seedlings and other plants. I have all my pepper plants out here. I've got a pineapple in here. I've got a whole bunch of uh, 
uh, pomegranate seedlings here. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, I got a citronella right there, another citronella behind the camera. So this is really a great nursery location for my yard. And that's just because of its little microclimate in here. These will get a little bit of sun today. Uh, we are going to be getting some cold weather, so I may have to be bringing in these bags into the, sun, the Florida room um, before it gets too cold. Uh, I have a feeling this weekend I'm going to be doing a lot of carrying bags in and out because we've got two or three nights that are supposed to get cold. So, have to see what happens. But uh, I'll try to remember to shoot a video. Uh-oh, uh I lost it. Where'd it go? Okay, there's that one. Oh, there it is, right there, okay. <laughs> yeah, put down my keys, turn around, it's gone. We will water that in. Now this is the better one, as far as soil for the garden. Um, and I really wanna experiment with low sand content on this big one. Uh, I have a feeling it's gonna grow either way we do it. Um, but I, I am gonna go get some compost. Right? Remember, Eric, we did get bone meal and this Dr. Earth's homegrown organic. Same stuff. So now, if you follow along, you know these videos are um, my own oh, no, are my own vlog of what I do. Uh, there's good indexes. I like to put good indexes in the descriptions, so you can go to sections of the, all my videos if you only want to see certain parts. That's for me, it's so that I can go back and one of these days I'm gonna be wondering, okay, which one did I uh, do the no sand in and I'll be able to go back and see okay it's the one with the single plant right in the middle not the one with the two plants because if one fails I, I suspect it's going to be this one I don't think it's going to fail but anyway so yeah and and this now the interesting thing about this uh, compost I have with a uh, with undigested material um, after the after it gets watered a few times um, the nutrient rich stuff will get washed down and it will actually act as a mulch on top as well. So a bunch of advantages, disadvantages. It's what I have. It's free and in great abundance. I've gotten well over 30 yards for my property. I think I might be closer to 40 yards now. That's a lot of soil. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm keeping the node just a little bit. Now, this little white thing here, I don't know if that's gonna grow up into something. It kinda shot up a little bit when I put this in the water. So I'm going to give it every advantage that I can think of. And we're gonna put that in the middle of this bag and then we're gonna water these in. I don't want to disturb the soil too much, so I'm going to be watering underneath with a very small spray. More than that. Now on these spray, this particular nozzle, you can actually adjust this, and it will give you less. See there? See how it's going down now? I can actually control how much water. That's what this back. Uh, tw twisty thing is. So that's about how much water I want to come out of here. I don't want to really disturb the soil. It's very easy to get your water so strong that it disturbs it. Uh, I do have the watering wand with the little shower head and that thing is great. Basically what this does is it helps to get the soil uh, settled around the roots so that uh, they can have, an, have good contact with the rich soil 
We put the nutrients in. It should be very excited to have all the nutrients. It has compost. It has this one has sand. It has uh, old uh, potting soil. Uh, this one also has the vermiculite, which would oh I should have put not vermiculite but, but the the white stuff. Okay, I said it earlier. I can't remember what it's called. Um, perlite, the perlite. Uh, I should have put some perlite in that for that that single one. Oh well, I'm not going to do it now. But yeah, so I'm just getting so getting the uh, water in there so that soil will settle around those roots real good. I believe that's going to be good enough. So there we go. First two sugar canes are out. I got two more still inside. Uh, one is the one that I showed that's just starting to root. The other one hadn't showed much interest in rooting yet. So we'll have to see if we can get something out of it. But uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for following along. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you want to be sure to stay up to date on the uh, the the sugar cane updates as well as the rest of the garden i do garden updates every month uh when this comes out you'll notice that uh the the october garden video tours came out very late i'm using new software uh kind of changing things around you notice we have a video intro and an outro now uh so i had to learn some new things and that's why everything was late hopefully the November Garden Tours will be out in a much more timely fashion. Uh, I'm very excited about how things are going with the videos. So I think that's about it. Uh, I've already got a couple of homes for the pomegranate trees. Uh, I have two trays uh, with probably tw at least 20 trees that need to be planted out from each of the two trays. So 40 more pomegranates. I have to get some citronella clipped and rooted. Uh, I have to cover the um, pepper bed. I have to do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I need to get raised bed number one ready for new soil. Uh, it's the worst of the sunken soil. And uh, I'm a little concerned because I got some cabbage growing in there. Uh, some red acre cabbage uh, you can see that in the uh, in bed number one uh, on the video tours but uh, I'm gonna have to build a little wall around that to protect those I think uh, until they grow <sighs> I don't have much to do uh, I've been coming out with a lot of videos and uh, it's no surprise when you look at the to-do list I need to get my to-do list written back up on a on a whiteboard like uh, Jessie over at Plot 37, um, she has her chalkboard in her little little potting shed, uh, and uh, I see her use it from time to time. And me, I'm all ADD. I have to have a list if I'm going to accomplish things, and I have to put things on the list, and I have to prioritize things. So uh, anyway, that is the video, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Maybe you learned a little something new. Um, I'm learning something new. I've never done sugar cane before, so this is completely new for me. Anyway, from the side garden, I'm Bowtie Dave for Bowtie Life. You know how it is. Have a blessed day.